Today I will show you an action, horror, sci-fi film from 2000, titled Hollow Man. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A rat is released in a lab and gets locked in a cage. It smells for food, when an invisible force catches it and eats it. Sebastian is working on his computer on a chemical formula and runs a simulation that fails. He spies on his neighbor taking her clothes off and is disappointed when she closes the curtains. Moments later, he gets an idea and reworks the chemical formula, running another simulation. This time it shows the element as stable. Sebastian calls Linda to tell her about the solution. When he sees the man sleeping in her bed, she tells him that it's not his business anymore. He shows Linda that he cracked the chemical solution for reversion. She's impressed that he was able to solve it out of the blue. Linda wakes Matt up to tell him that they need to go to the lab. She tells him they should take their own cars, but Matt thinks she needs to tell Sebastian about them at the right time. That morning, Sebastian arrives at the lab in a heavily guarded compound. He scans his fingerprint to get into an elevator and says his password. Inside the lab, the invisible animals can only be seen through thermal imaging. Matt pets an orangutan and says hello to a gorilla named Isabel. All the animals freak out when she jumps at the cage. He puts on thermal goggles to see her with and calms the animal down. When he goes inside to sedate her, she bites him, then runs away. Matt chasses her through the lab and runs into Sebastian, telling him that she's been more aggressive. Isabel has been invisible for too long so it's starting to affect her brain. Sebastian takes a tranquilizer gun and bets Matt on who will get to her first. They find and corner her. Sebastian tranquilizes her. Sarah storms toward them and argues with Sebastian about injecting Isabel with the serum before it's tested. She thinks it's unethical, but he thinks it will save time. He overrules her objections. Linda joins them and reminds Sebastian that he hired Sarah because she's the best vet in the country. Later, Linda is prepping the serum and tells Sebastian that she'll be ready soon. Sarah informs him that the gorilla is doing well and Carter walks in, saying that he's just the medical standby. Frank calls in from tech and tells them that they're ready also. Linda locks the serum into an injection gun and Matt gets it ready. Sarah looks for a vein in Isabel's arm and when she finds it, Sebastian takes the gun from Matt, saying that he will do it. He injects her and the serum visibly moves through her veins and body. Her heartbeat is elevated. The gorilla's body begins to show up and they're happy that it's working. Suddenly, she starts to get worse and she goes into cardiac arrest. Isabel's heart stops so Linda shocks her with a defibrillator. She keeps doing it a few times until her heart starts pumping again. When Isabel begins stabilizing, her body continues to become visible. Tech informs them that her quantum signatures have become stable. Everyone rejoices that they did it. Sarah thinks that she's going to be okay. Later, they all take her back to her cell together. Sebastian tells Sarah to get her ready for a vivisection on Monday and when she gets incredibly angry, Matt convinces her that he's joking. And he is. Sort of. Linda jumps in and suggests they go to celebrate their success. They celebrate in a restaurant. Then Linda and Sebastian have a heart-to-heart, -heart, with him wanting to get back together with her. She rejects him. He goes back to the lab and checks on Isabel. There's an invisible dog there too, which he pets and asks what it's like being invisible. Sometime later, Sebastian presents their findings to a Pentagon committee. Dr. Kramer asks Sebastian how they solved the problem of reversion and he lies saying that they haven't, to Linda's and Matt's surprise. Kramer says that they need to see results soon and if they can't make it work he'll find someone to replace him. Linda and Matt are pissed at him, but Sebastian explains that if they reported their findings, the Pentagon would have taken over their project completely. His idea for their next step is to jump into human trials themselves, without authorization. Sebastian tells them that this is their chance to change the world and get the Nobel Prize. Matt worries that they'll get in trouble. Later, they inform the team about the plan and none of them likes it. Sebastian tries to convince them, but Sarah can't believe the committee approved it. Sebastian doesn't care what they think though and tells them that they'll be going through it regardless. The day of the procedure, Matt tells Sebastian that he could change his mind, but he just makes fun of him. They walk inside and Sebastian gets on the bed, then they connect him to an IV drip and restrain him. He says he feels a little tense and his heart rate is elevated because of that. Frank and Janice argue over who'll get his Porsche if he dies. They irradiate the serum and bring it over to Sebastian, who wants to inject it himself, saying that if anything goes wrong the others can't be blamed. He injects the serum and Linda calls the moment. Everyone starts freaking out that they don't see anything happening to his body immediately. Suddenly, Sebastian begins feeling something. He begins to convulse and the process of becoming invisible starts in patches all over his body. Sebastian says that it hurts much more than he expected. Frank tells them that he's on the verge of a seizure. As he becomes invisible, his vital signs become even more erratic. They get the defibrillator ready and Frank tells them that he's beginning to shift, so Matt tells them to hold off with the paddles. They all watch him change as his vital signs stabilize. When he becomes completely invisible, Frank is the one that calls the moment when the phase shift occurred. Matt says that he's okay, but that he's in shock because of the trauma. 17 hours later, Sebastian wakes up and screams in pain, asking Linda and Matt to turn off the lights. 
He says he can't close his eyes and Linda tells him that he can, but that his eyelids are transparent. Sebastian gets up and goes to the mirror, then the three of them move to the general area of the lab. He immediately starts messing with everyone, until Frank gets a pair of goggles and sees him with them. Matt and Linda take him back to his room and can turn on the observation monitor, while Sarah is doing the same in the other room. She will be the one to take the first shift and Carter will take the next one. Sarah gets the last monitor and turns off the lights. Very soon, she falls asleep and Sebastian walks through the lab and gets into the observation room. He begins to touch her while she sleeps. Sarah wakes up and asks if he's in there, then checks the monitors, but as soon as she turns around he gets back into bed. The next day she tells Linda about it, but she's not sure if it actually happened and feels horrible. Linda doesn't know what to do either and Matt wants to talk to him, though Sarah tells him not to. Later, he's checking Sebastian's vitals and he questions him as if it's procedure. The results show that everything is normal. Sarah takes off the medical device from him and he manages to make her feel even more uncomfortable. Frank and Janice get into the lab and she goes to the toilet, but she feels like someone is watching her, so she puts on the thermal goggles to be able to pee. She even tells the same to Carter after lunch. The team talks about Sebastian and the things he might do now that he's invisible. It seems that all of them agree that he won't be up to anything good. As soon as they leave the kitchen, a chair that appeared to be empty turns around. He was listening to them all along. That night, it's Linda's shift in the lab. She is working on the serum, when Sebastian begins to mess with her too, moving her coke can around the lab. He begins to give her a massage and asks her if she wants to find out what it would be like to make love with an invisible man on his last night in that state. She refuses his advances. The next day, Matt and Carter prepare the serum to phase him back and Linda sprays his arm so they can see his veins. They inject him with the serum and it shows up, like it did with Isabel before. The moment in which more of his organs begin appearing, he says that something isn't right and begins to choke. His vitals became erratic. Sarah realizes that his lungs are seized and tells Carter to intubate him. Sebastian breaks through his restraints, so the men hold him down. He pushes Carter off with incredible force and kicks Matt off of himself, getting up and looking disoriented as his flesh begins appearing and disappearing again. Sarah and Linda intubate him before he becomes invisible again and Matt compresses his heart. They get a pulse, but he goes into shock as he disappears again. Sebastian wakes up later with Linda by his side. She tells him that he almost died. He says that the committee don't need to know what happened yet. Because he's going to be stuck in that state for a while, they make him a synthetic mask. Linda cuts a slit for the mouth and two holes for his eyes while the mask is still on him. Matt brings him a mirror so he can see himself. Now they need to figure out what went wrong. Linda and Matt work from home and can't figure out the formula for the reversion serum. He says that he's not a genius like Sebastian, able to jump to the right conclusion. Ten days later, Sebastian is getting physically and psychologically sick from all the testing they have been doing on him. He argues with Matt about it, then Linda comforts him. Sebastian says that what they're doing for him is not enough. That night, he can't stand being there anymore, so he decides to leave. He tells Carter, but he can't let him leave because the rules forbid it. Sebastian says that it's his rule and he can change it. He leaves and tells him he'll be back in a couple of hours. Carter calls Linda to tell her. Sebastian dodges the police guard outside, who's begun to worry that his car hasn't moved in a while, and drives out of the compound. He stops at a light and scares the heck out of a couple of kids. Linda and Matt leave their apartment to go back to the lab and she tells him that he could be anywhere. Sebastian walks into his apartment and grabs a few of his stuff to bring back to the lab, then he sees his neighbor undressing again. Moments later, his neighbor is taking a shower and her doorbell rings. She sees no one in the hallway, but it rings again so she opens the door and goes outside, leaving ample room for Sebastian to come inside. He follows her to her room and looks at her. He begins moving her mirror, scaring her. Sebastian grabs her and rapes her. Meanwhile, Linda is looking for him in his apartment. The door is unlocked, so she goes inside and sees he's left his mask there. Sebastian leaves his neighbor crying and sees that Linda is in his apartment. Back at the lab, everyone is getting ready to find him. They pass equipment around and talk about the fact that no one outside of them can find out what he is. Suddenly, Sebastian arrives and tells them that he just went to his apartment to pick up some stuff. Linda confronts him, telling him what she saw in his apartment and Matt asks him why he had to go in public. Sebastian says that he's still the project leader and it's his decision to make. Linda threatens him that she'll report him to the committee if he leaves the lab again. When everyone leaves, Sarah finds out from Linda that the committee doesn't know about what they've done, but promises to stay quiet. Linda and Matt wonder if Sebastian's invisibility has started affecting his mind. The next day, Carter is performing tests on Sebastian and they talk about what he did the night when he was out. Sebastian doesn't quite tell him what he did, but spins things around just so that he can get a positive reaction from Carter. That night, Linda is sleeping and Sebastian pulls her covers away and begins to undress her. Suddenly, her phone rings and she wakes up from the nightmare. Matt tells her that he thinks he's found the solution. Next, they're seen in the lab explaining it to Sebastian and the rest of the team. 
they run a simulation and it gets only to 95% before it starts breaking down, which sends Sebastian into a rage spiral and he leaves. Linda goes after him and confronts him about his treatment of Matt, saying that he's trying to fix him. Sebastian says that he has a gift which he can't even use and if she wasn't so short-sighted she'd let him explore it. Later, he gets an idea about the security camera and tells Frank that he'll be in the lab. He gets a few tools and rigs the camera to make it look like he's there. After that, he goes to Linda's apartment and spies on her. Matt walks into her apartment, which makes Sebastian angry, so when they go to the other room to make love, he breaks the window. Matt doesn't see anything, so Linda calls the lab to check if Sebastian's there. Frank sees him on the rig camera. Back in the lab, Sebastian is steaming Matt about Linda. The dog keeps barking which makes it even worse, so he goes to its cage and kills it brutally. Sarah finds the dog the next day. She immediately confronts Sebastian about it and gets nowhere with him. They check the security camera and it shows him in bed all night. Later, Linda is in her room and she thinks that Sebastian is there. She says that he's not being funny and throws a blanket over the place she thinks he's standing. Scared, she runs out of her apartment and into her car. Linda drives to the lab. Matt tells her that Sebastian is asleep as it's seen on the monitor, but she goes to check his room nevertheless. She realizes that he's gone and figures out he did something to the camera. Linda calls everyone back in the lab. Sebastian is outside. Janice asks if they will go after him, but Linda thinks they should go to the committee. Matt says that he's been going out night after night and they have no idea what he's been doing. Linda tells the rest that her and Matt will take full responsibility in front of the committee. Sebastian is there, listening to what they're saying. As the two of them are leaving, Matt says that they'll brief the team the next day. Later, they're at Kramer's house and Sebastian spies at them from outside. Kramer says he'll call all the necessary people, as he sends Linda and Matt out the door, telling them to pack up their stuff. Kramer goes to make the call, but his phone line is down. He hears the door and goes into the yard. Sebastian appears in the smoke from his pipe, then pushes him in the pool and drowns him viciously. Sebastian comes out of the pool before Kramer's wife comes down to check on him. The next day, Linda comes back to the lab and Sebastian scares her. He says it's going to be a busy day. Matt tells her that he got back at 3 a.m. and has been wandering through the lab ever since. Kramer hasn't called him back, so Linda calls him. His wife tells her that he drowned. Linda tries to call one of the generals, but the line drops. Matt checks the phone and finds out that they have no outside line so they go to inform security. When they walk inside the elevator, it doesn't accept their passwords. They come back and tell the others. Frank checks the security system, while Matt says that it could take a couple of days for someone to find them there. Frank figures out that there's nothing wrong with the system, but that Sebastian has removed all of their access. They grab their goggles and leave, except for Janice who forgets hers and comes back. When she walks outside the door, Sebastian kills her. The others look for him in his room. Linda asks him to tell them where he is. Sebastian tells her that he can't let them turn him in because he enjoys his power too much. He also tells them that Kramer died before he could tell anyone. Linda notices that Janice isn't there so they run to find her. They discover her body in a locker. Carter thinks that Sebastian has snapped, but Matt thinks that he planned everything out because he knew they would turn him in. Sarah slaps Linda, yelling that she could have stopped the experiment at any point. Frank agrees with her. Carter just wants to know what they should do. Linda says they're not going to wait around. The team powers up the motion detectors and sees him on the monitor. Matt and Carter go to find him and the rest watch their backs. The two split up, when Frank and Sarah come back. Linda looses him on the monitors and Matt almost shoots Carter. They think they see him and Matt goes to take him down, but it turns out just to be a vent. Sebastian grabs Carter and when Matt turns around he begins to shoot, hitting one of the pipes. Sebastian can be seen because of the vapor, so he shoots him again. He drops Carter and hurts him really bad. Linda tells Matt that Sebastian is there so he shoots the pipes again and is able to see him, but Sebastian escapes and locks Matt in the tunnel. However, he remained on Matt's side of the door, he just can't see him because he's raised the heat and rendered the goggles useless. Linda goes out to help Matt and tells the rest to get Carter. Matt tries another approach to see him and they argue about Linda, then Matt hits him. Just as Sebastian manages to knock him down, Linda saves him. Meanwhile, Sarah and Frank find Carter. She leaves Frank there to apply pressure to his wound until she gets blood for a transfusion. Sarah takes packets of blood from the lab, when she hears Sebastian come inside. She pours the blood on the ground to see him and waits a bit. When he doesn't show up, she grabs the last remaining pack and goes to the other door, when he grabs her from the other side of the room. She opens the pack and pours it on him, but he still gets the upper hand and shoots her with a tranquilizer gun, then he breaks her neck. Simultaneously, Linda and Matt find Frank just as Carter dies. They go back to the lab. Linda finds Sarah. Then Sebastian kills Frank when he has his back turned. He wounds Matt too and locks them in the freezer. Linda uses duct tape to close Matt's wound. In the meantime, Sebastian is getting ready to finally escape. Matt loses consciousness and Linda tries to break out of the freezer. She gets an idea about how she can do that. 
In the meantime, Sebastian is getting what he'll need to blow up the lab. He mixes a concoction and throws it like a grenade to check it. Linda creates a magnet with a defibrillator and opens the door by pulling out the lever with the magnet. She gets Matt outside and lights a fire to warm him up. Before she leaves, Linda takes a gas tank. Simultaneously, Sebastian makes a bomb by putting the concoction into a lab device set for five minutes. When he walks in the elevator, Linda catches up to him and sets him on fire. She continues doing it, as he tries to take his clothes up before they fuse with his skin. Linda loses gas in the tank and Sebastian escapes. Then she activates the sprinkler system. He sneaks up on her and beats her, trying to kill her. Suddenly, Matt appears and knocks him out. Sebastian is still alive though and he attacks them again, but electrocutes himself by mistake. His body starts showing up for a moment. They find the bomb, so they run and get inside the elevator shaft. Matt goes first and Linda follows. The bomb explodes and sends the elevator shooting up the shaft. They hide in time, but it comes back down, stopping just on top of them. They continue to climb, when Sebastian grabs Linda and as they struggle they fall back on the elevator, sending it back down. Her and Sebastian struggle and when he kisses her, she grabs onto the cable and releases the elevator. Sebastian falls into the fire and Linda climbs up to Matt. The two of them walk out of the lab alive. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.